Hey everybody, this is Kasu and welcome to part 2 of Arc Horizon. If you have not seen part 1 yet, uh, just go to my video, I'll put a link to the description below. And today we'll be going through the next part of the Arc Horizon, which is 5 creatures from, uh, from the Aloe tier to the Giga tier. So without further ado, let's begin. First up is the Aloe tier, and for the Aloe tier, we have this, the Gorgosaurus. The Gorgosaurus comes in what, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 types of variant. The normal slip, the normal variant, which has a kind of a polka dot kind of pattern. Uh, the paleo arc variant, which has more stripy patterns. The aberrant variant, which has a much more different like contrasting color. The X variant, which has a more fiery pattern to it. The Ember Crystalline variant, which has a skull, a dragon skull to it. The Extinction variant, which are just very much more stripy. The R variant, which is a mixture of polka dots and stripe. And lastly, the Inferno variant. The Inferno variant is the only variant that is not obtained via taming. This particular variant, you have to do something special. Uh, mainly is to kill a certain boss in order to get his egg, but I'll go on to that later. And before we begin, I almost forgot to mention, the Gorgosaurus is tamed via passive tame only at level 60. It eats meat, honey, and exceptional, exceptional kibble, and golden set. Uh, best is to wear a gilly armor so it doesn't spot you. Uh, very similar to how you tame a Dino Suckers if you did play Garuda's mod. So, almost forgot to mention, the Gorgosaurus actually has two different saddles the normal saddle like this and the armored saddle like this so the armored saddle actually can protect uh the player from projectile and turrets so let's take a look at his all his abilities first so let's go over his abilities his left click is a good old standard by the tag his right click is a hit button as so, uh, the hitbar does, does have a little bit of a cooldown, so uh, you know, just keep the token after that. And the hitbar does do massive knockback. His X key is a heavy bite attack, which will deal bleeding damage, as you can tell. And uh, lastly, for his raw, is his C key. Yep, pretty cool. And now, on to the variant differences. So for the crystalline variant and actually some of the other variants, the right click is a bit different. The right click is a shoulder bash rather than a hit butt. And that track just disappeared, hold on. So as I was saying, uh, some of the variants, their right click is no longer a sh hit butt but rather a shoulder bash. For example, like this one, this uh, crystal variant. And this crystal variant's heavy bite attack actually does something else too. It does and flame damage instead of bleed. But similar to the other variants, his heavy bite attack, you can't really spam it. And last of the Gorgosaurus we're gonna go through is the Inferno Gorgosaurus. Uh, usually all these so-called boss teams have a different variant or rather a different extra abilities that they have. So let's find out. So left click is still a normal bite attack, however the damage is quite a lot. Right click is a shoulder bash that does bleed. His C key, his cosmetic raw, is still the same, uh, but it does not deal damage with the fire, but it's pretty cool because it actually spills fire out of his mouth. To prove you that uh, the fire doesn't do any damage, I'm just going to. And you might be thinking, oh, but it's too far away. Let me just go further back then. Yep, I'm really right on it. No damage whatsoever. So it's purely cosmetic. And lastly, is X key. It does a mini explosion that does crippled damage. So yeah, the Inferno variant is probably the strongest variant among all of the Gorgosaurus with a bite that cripples and explodes, a shoulder bash that bleeds, and a roar that is way more cool than the rest. Now on to the boss variant of the Gorgosaurus. So first up for the boss variant is this guy, the Alpha Gorgosaurus. And you know, just really really red. Uh, but what do you get from killing it? So once it's down, access inventory and you get a bunch of chibis all related to the mod. 
the dozier for this particular uh gogosaurus and just a bunch of other random stuff that is around now for the next uh hostile untamable gogosaurus variant is this one the ghost gogosaurus uh it's basically just a gogosaurus but you can't tame it at all so after killing it uh you just you can't really get anything from it except you get the ghost skin that you can put onto your gogosaurus Next up is a boss variant, and this is the zombie Gogosaurus. Let me get out of the way so I can see. As you can tell, uh, it summons a lot of things. It's a boss for a reason. Like, holy heck, it summons all these zombie wyverns and stuff like that. So, after you kill, finally, after you kill the Gogosaurus and his uh, minions, and all these zombie bird minions too. Yeah, the Gogosaurus zombie variant, it's... Really difficult as it summons a bunch of minions, some Zomdodos, a bunch of Necro Wyverns, I mean Zombie Wyverns. But the reward you get is, first up, a Chibi Ghost Gogosaurus, a 50 elements, some Ramshackle Boots, ignore the background uh, bell, the Gogosaurus costume, and lastly, a trophy that you can mount on the wall. I'm sorry. And to spawn this particular zombie Gorgosaurus, all you need to do is go to inventory, mouse over it, take all these items like the 50 pumpkin scarecrows and stolen headstone, then you can spawn it. Uh, however, like as shown there, it is only available during Halloween, but you can technically, you know, if you own the server, just um, make it happen. Up next is this one the boss gogglesaurus in this case it's the infernal gogglesaurus that we actually kind of tame and as you can tell it has way more abilities than your own gogglesaurus so what do you get from killing it let's find out you get a bunch of stuff uh first up you get the chibi infernal gogglesaurus 50 elements again a gogglesaurus costume to put onto your normal gogglesaurus a Infernal Gorgosaurus flag. Let's take a look at how this looks. Yep, pretty sick. The Infernal Gorgosaurus trophy to put on your wall. And some tech stuff with it, since it's a quite a tough boss. And last of all of the bosses is this one. The Gorgosaurus Prime. As you can tell, it's way bigger, way tankier, just really, really strong. And... Maybe I can show you some of the attacks if he decides to attack me. That's one of them. Aha, uh -huh. he just shot electricity around it. Not sure how he took damage, but okay. So yeah, it's just really really strong. Be prepared for a fight if you ever want to kill it. But if you do indeed kill it, you'll get a lot of stuff. So... First up, you get the Infernal Gorgosaurus Chibi again. You get the element, the costume, the flag, the trophy, tech parts, yada yada yada. But most importantly, you get this: the Infernal, a fertilized Infernal Gorgosaurus egg. This is your way to collecting the boss variant or the boss version of the Gorgosaurus or any of the other creatures in this game so basically you just have to kill the prime creatures to get the boss variant egg in order to hatch it and yeah that's it for just the gorgosaurus now up next is these guys the sotrio uh for the boss variant of the sotrio it does have a special name called frotinus custos and so this is how the sotrio looks like First up is the normal variant, which has a horn for a head, very similar to a Ceratosaurus. Next up is this one, a R variant. Next up is the albino variant, clearly not white enough because there's a blue on its tail instead. The X variant, which has a red again, a very deep contrast from its skin and its patterns. And lastly, the boss variant, also known as Frotinus Crustus or however you have to say it, which has spikes running on his back. So what are his abilities? Well, let's find out. 
So uh, this creature actually has a very unique feature. If you press X key, it will change its current mode. So currently I'm on hot mode, then now I'm on cold mode. Um, it's you can't really tell the difference. But in hot mode, uh, some one of its ability has a difference. So first up is his left click attack, which is a standard bite attack. His right click is just a raw. I'll show you the raw later again. His C key is a hit bash attack. So currently I'm in hot mode, and if I do my hit bash, and try it again, it will deal fire damage. And if I switch to cold mode, and I do my hit bash, it will deal frosty, which is a slow. Also, I forgot to mention, in cold mode, uh, the sorcery overnator actually has a 20% resistance, whereas in a hot mode, it has a 20% more melee damage. So currently I'm in cold mode and I do a bite attack, I'm doing 67 damage. Now I'm in hot mode, it should do more damage. But it seems that uh, it's the same. Probably there's a bug, maybe the guy didn't really set it well. So not very sure what's going on, but the wiki is a just, you know, a give of, uh, just... I think you have a pinch of salt uh, for the wiki. And as I uh, said, this is how the raw looks like from the front. Alright, now on to the different variants. So for the albino variant, the bite attacks actually do bleed. Funny enough. However, the cold and hot variants still not much difference. As you can tell. And his hit bash is, you know, still the same. So the only difference is his bite attack has a natural bleed to them. So obviously the albino variant is way better. So currently I'm on the boss variant of the Sword Trivenator. His left click doesn't really do anything special. It's just a normal bite attack. Let's try on a different target this time. Yep, I have this Triceratops here. It's normal bite attack, doesn't really do anything different. It's just a normal bite attack that hurts a lot more. His C key is still a hit bar that deals frost when on cold mode and fire on hot mode if I can hit that like, damn thing. Yep, there we go. However, his right click, which is the raw, does have a special ability. Uh, and even though it shows, it has a different sound and it shows like this, it actually does have a, another ability. I'm gonna spawn another track to show you. If I were to press right click, I'll do an ice breath attack. Uh, this ice breath attack, regardless of what mode you're in, will not uh, have any changes. It will still only use your ice breath attack. And yeah, that's it for the controls of the Sotrivenator. Now let's go and go over the boss variants. Well, first up for the boss variant is the Alpha. So this is the Alpha Sotrivenator. You kill it. You will gain these items, the Sotrivenator dossier and a bunch of honestly not very good items, but this is just an Alpha. Now, next up is the Sotrivenator boss. As shown, the boss is called Frotinus Custus, which is why I've shown. It summons a bunch of polar bears and stuff, basically a more ice kind of, uh, ice style kind of uh, creature. However, if you kill it, you gain a lot of things, but I'll show all of that after I wipe out this population of polar bears. Yeah, your ice caps ain't helping now, huh? That's right. <clears throat> so after killing the uh, boss variant of the Sotrivenator, you'll get the Frotinus Custus Chibi, the 50 elements, the Frotinus Custus costume if you want to put it on your uh, Sotrivenator, the trophy, this Icicle Blade skin which has a strange blade imbued with energy in it, which I'm going to try out later, and some tech items. So I'm going to try this out now. So this is how it looks like. Uh, pretty cool, pretty sick. 
However, it's doesn't seem like it will do anything much. Yep, it doesn't do like anything much, even though it says as though it has some strange energy associated with it. Uh, it's just a typical sword. And I was also thinking like maybe it's similar to Mjolnir, you actually have to put it on to the Hack Blade. However, it's, you know, doesn't really work. Like the Hack Blade is like this, but if I want to try to put the skin onto it, uh, it, it doesn't really show. I can't really put it on. Okay. So yeah, that's it for the boss variant of the Sotrivanator. Get a fancy new skin, but the fancy new skin doesn't really amount to much. Just, you know, a skin. And lastly is the Sotrivanator Prime. Which looks like this. It, what the fuck is that? It pulses some weird pulse around the area. Uh, it's trying to bite me, but it's not working. Kind of waiting for it to do something. But looks like it doesn't really spawn minions. It's just the prime version of the Sotrivanator. And if you kill it, you'll get very you'll get very similar loot to the uh, boss variant of it. However, most importantly, you get this: the Frontiers Custos Egg, which is the only way to hatch the boss variant of the Sotrivanator. And yeah, that's it. That's it for all of the Sotrivanator variants, and that is all for Sotrivanator itself. On to the next creature. Oh, and before I move on from the uh, Sotrivanator, one more thing to note is that his taming is knocked out, and it only can be knocked out via explosives. Now, up next is the Chasmosaur. The Chasmosaur is a Ceratopsian, and it only comes in three variants, no boss variants whatsoever. Clearly, this the person who made this mod has a biasness against herbivores and really likes carnivores only. But disregarding my anger with uh, people not liking herbivores, how to tame this creature is KO tame. And it is berries, veggies, golden flowers, and extraordinary cables. However, uh, try not to get too close to it because it does have an ice armor ability that will drop its that will drop topper, or rather it will drain topper. So first up is the normal variant of the Chasmosaur, which looks, you know, like this. A tree horn on the front, good looking frill, and a spotted pattern. Next up is the R variant, which is a more linear pattern, and a much more prevalent uh, white and black style. And lastly is the X variant, which has more polka dots than anything. If you have trypophobia, I'm so sorry. So let's take a look at his abilities. So I uh, summon a trike and also do a quick comparison. It is quite similar in size to the trike. You know, makes sense. But let's look at his abilities. Left click is a hit button attack. Right click uh, doesn't do anything. Uh, they say nothing yet, but I'm pretty sure it's nothing forever. C key is a storm attack that can harvest uh, metal or rocks, but it also does damage. His left control is a melee booster. But it doesn't seem like it's working. It says its allies during a small radio has a 10% increase. However, I'm gonna try that out later. Now, lastly, is his X key, which is Ice Armor. Which will, first of all, knock people back and they are slowed. However, uh, you do gain a 20% damage reduction and it slows the Chasmosaurus down for the first 3 seconds. So let's try that again with the uh, left control. I'm going to press left control near this other Chasmosaur. And yeah, it does give them the empowered buff which will boost the abilities or rather the attack damage by 10%. And yeah, unfortunately that's actually it for the Chasmosaur. It literally only like 3 variants of it. And it doesn't really do much. So yeah. Now, moving on from the Aloe tier, we're going to the Rex tier. And for the Rex tier, we're going to have one creature, and that is the Sukomimus. The Sukomimus comes in seven variants. First up is the normal variant, which has a swampy look to it. The R variant, which has kind of like a beak for some reason. The X variant, which is very colorful. The Aberrant variant, which has, you know, more aquatic looking thing. The Eldritch variant, look, which basically just, you know, color change. The Blood Crystalline variant, which has a nice black-red contrast. 
And lastly, the boss variant, which is called Scales. To tame any of these creatures, it's just a standard knockout. Uh, it's raw prime fish meat and superior cables to tame. Uh, one more thing to note about the Sukumai is that when it spawns, it will be similar to the U Tyrannus, where it will spawn with one or two circles, which it can buff with its raw. So look out for that. So let's take a look at his abilities. So first up, uh, while on land, he's you know pretty slowish, and in water, it is uh. It's equally slowish, but it does not have any, uh, you know, movement reduction. Not movement reduction. It doesn't have any movement speed cut when in the water. However, do take note, uh, its stamina is pretty bad. Like, I you know it's level one, but its stamina is just really, really bad for a creature like this size. Like, I'm just running, and you can see my stamina draining. So, uh, first up is its left click attack, which is a standard bite attack. His left control is a stomp, which will do AoE damage and also knockback. This ability is spammable and also I really love how how mobile and how uh, expressive it is when they do the spawn stomp attack. So for his right click, it's really a bit special. So when you first just take note of the left click attack, uh, it deals 72 damage now. However, if I were to use my uh, yeah, so it's still 72 damage. If I use my right click to his, do a claw swipe, it will inflict strike one. In strike one, I will do five percent more damage. In strike two, I will do ten percent more damage. In strike three, I will do twenty percent more damage. And once strike three is over, you know you can't really do much, but you can reapply it uh, as often as you want. But make sure to not spam the attack as uh, if you are on current on strike 1 and you spam it again, you will refresh strike 1 and you will still deal 1% uh, like the 5% extra damage. However, if you are at strike 2 and you do the claw strike attack, it will still remain at strike 2. So the idea is to keep it at strike 3 and occasionally use your claw attack along with your bite attack to ensure maximum damage on enemies or friends or whatever. Oh yeah, it's a very interesting uh, creature that has a 3 part debuff that comes with his call attack. And lastly is his C key, which is a raw boost. I'm going to show you the raw first. Looks pretty cool. But with the raw boost, uh, all the other creatures have the encourage buff, which uh, has their damage, the, receive, the damage that they receive reduced by 10% for 8 seconds. This has a 20 second cooldown. Now that we have gone through all of the abilities, let's go with the variant, the different variant abilities. So the Blood Crystal variant, when harvesting a corpse, does give it a short, very short buff, as you can tell from the top right corner. I'm gonna go kill something else and let you guys see again. Like as you can see on the top right corner, I do gain a buff that lasts for a second. This buff is actually a uh, short healing buff uh, that this creature will get when you harvest a dead corpse. Now let's go on to the boss variants. Uh, for the boss variant, its stamina is way better than its uh, smaller counterparts. And let's see all its abilities. So its left click will do a bite attack that does you know normal, like higher damage, but doesn't really inflict anything. Its C key is a raw that. Gives himself hardened scale. Um, from my understanding, this should be uh, just an ability that increases your armor. But let's take a look at it. So currently, I'm receiving like three damage from this guy with a uh, sorry, I'm gonna swipe him with a uh, hardened scale. I now receive one damage from this guy. So yeah, hardened scale does what hardened scale does. Surprisingly, just makes you harder to kill. Funny enough, I didn't notice this, but this this boss variant actually does inflict ton mill poison onto any enemies that hit it, and as you can tell, it's just a poison damage tick over time. Not a lot, but you know, might come in handy. Uh, his right click is the same; it does the strike around strike two, strike three debuff. Uh, but paired with the ton mill poison, the damage received is increased, so the poison actually increased. Left control is the very animated stomp attack, which I really love. 
However, uh, for the boss variant, you can't really spam it. And yeah, that's about it for the Suko Mimer. So, but before we go, let's see the raw from the front because like, we didn't really see it from the front. Pretty cool. I actually really like this. So, uh, to get your own variant skills similar, you have to kill a prime version. However, this prime version is very weird. This prime version, you can tame it too. So if you wanted to, if, and you have enough topper, value, uh, topper items, you can actually just sleep it in order to tame it. However, uh, if you do kill it, you can get your very own skills egg. And now that we're done with the Suko Mimers, and uh, we're actually officially done with the Rex tier creatures in this mod, we are now finally going to the last tier, the Giga tier, and also the last creature of this mod, the Tyranno Titan. The Tyranno Titan comes in seven variants, including the boss variant, that are tameable. The normal variant, which has, you know, a really skull-like feature for its head, pretty cool. The extinction variant, which is very colorful. The aberrant variant, which is not as colorful, but have a more mellow color. For the aberrant variant, uh, which, you know, I don't really like it. The R variant, which looks fiery, but not very fiery. The paleo arc variant, which has a mix of patterns on it and lastly the boss variant known as Vin Dice and it has a glowy glowy like its patterns are glowing so yeah pretty cool now how do you tame this creature you tame it using your knockout method but you have to use a catapult so best is you trap it first then you use a cat you set up a catapult to just lock rocks at its face so let's take a look at his abilities so first up for his abilities is actually his running his running is similar to the Woolly Tyra uh Woolly Rhino, where as you're running, it will start racking up uh this the heart meter on the right. And obviously the higher meter, the higher the meter is, the more damage it does. So first up is its left click, which is a standard good old standard by attack. That doesn't really do much. His right click is a hit bash, which will deal knockback. His X key is a stomp. And this storm is pretty simple, just you know, a simple storm. And you can spam it so you can hit enemies behind you, as shown like right here, like behind you to knock them up back if your jaws can't reach them. So up next is his C key, which is a brawl. However, the brawl is not really shown or rather spelled out very obviously on the mod guide page. So I'm gonna do it and we're gonna see how it is uh, as I roll. So, first up is when you press C key, it will roar. And that's how the roar looks like. And it does give itself a buff. And as you can see from the top right, it has Behemoths. Let me get rid of this uh, stupid UI. Give me a moment. So, from the mod guide, it does say that it will, it will cycle through four different raw. So, let's just use them. So first up uh, on the raw is Behemoth's melee and there's a 15 second cooldown so you can't really spam it but from the, from the looks of it it's either random or it's it's random okay so it's very random uh, now currently I have Behemoth's Endurance which I will reduce damage taken by 35% and immune to bleed and stun so it's really random and it's not uh, variant specific but I'll try to get as all of the different buffs as possible. Uh, now currently I have Rapid Regeneration on this one. Ah, there you go. Uh, let me remove the UI as much as possible. But he must break. Your Tyrant Titan had a sudden loss of energy. So it's a 1 out of 4 chance that you might get a debuff on yourself uh, but the other 3 times you will do get a buff for yourself now that we went through all of the abilities for the Tyranno Titan let's go through the abilities of the boss variant yep, left click is a bite attack that doesn't do much uh, it's just a really really hard bite attack <laughs> that deals like 600 damage on level 1 by the way now uh, his right click is a hit bash that also doesn't do much, but it does insane amount of damage. Again, this is level 1 and it dealt nearly 1000 damage. 
His C key is a ball shoots like balls out of his mouth that will deal electric like electrocute damage. Maybe you could if you can try that one more time, my good friend can do it one more time. Yep. It will it will just throw a bunch of balls that will deal electric damage. It's not really similar to the uh, lightning wyvern's breath, but it's some it throws a ball that will deal electric damage around the ball. And for the X key, it's a stomp a deck that summons lightning. So yeah, uh, pretty pretty fucking cool. In fact, let's see whether the lightning damage will. Oh, that's oh, just one shot it. Never mind. Uh, you know what? Let's summon something tankier, like a Rex. Okay. Okay, keep it. Okay, so the storm attack uh, doesn't do electric damage. However, it does hit relatively hard, like that. So yeah, that is the uh, variant. That is the boss variant of the Tyranno Titan, which honestly, really, really fucking cool. And with that, let's go on to the enemy variants of the Tyranno Titan. First up is this, the boss variant, which is basically the Vin Dice. Uh, I went through his ability, but it seems like it does not have any extra abilities. They think that like there's a light there's a lightning storm now. Yeah, doesn't seem like it has any other abilities other than the ones that I've already shown. Uh, so let's kill it. So after oh god, so after killing it. You get these items. Uh, you get again elements, some tech stuff, uh, the Vindai's costume, uh, the Vindai's trophy. I don't know why you get Rockwell's recipe. And yeah, that's it for the basic boss uh, items. The Tyrant Titan does not have an Alpha variant, but it does have a Prime variant, as shown here. And the Prime variant has 1.5 million HP, so yeah, keep watch out for that. Uh, the lightning balls that it summons are electric, like red. Um, uh, and it seems like you know it does everything what a Tyrant Titan can do. And again, it has one by five million HP, so yeah, keep a lookout for that and be prepared for a fight. Now, what happened? Now, what do you get after you kill it? Uh, you get literally so many items that the game couldn't even like recognize, or rather, I'll uh, put in one sitting. So let's take a look. So you get again element. You get most importantly the Vindice egg for you to craft your very own or rather have your very own Vindice. A lot of tech items of varying um uh, not master. Yeah, you just get a bunch of tech items. And obviously lastly the Vindice costume and the Vindice trophy. And yeah, that's about it for Arc Horizon. Honestly, my view on this, my review on this mod, it's all the models. Pretty nice looking, especially this guy. Look at this guy, so cool. And all the abilities and stuff like that are pretty unique to themselves. Uh, obviously, there are some fantasy element to it, not real dinosaur things to it, but that's okay. This is Ark. You take what you can get, and honestly, it doesn't really matter. And honestly, it and to me, it's actually a pretty well-made mod, even though, like as you can see in the comment section, and my previous video, some people are saying that, oh, this is made by Krista. However, I verified it. It's not made by Krista, it's made by someone that uh, tanked Krista in its comments, uh, in its description. So no worries, this game, this mod is not made by Krista, it's made by its own, uh, the own user. Like, uh, I forgot his name, I can pull out on the screen right now to show you what, who his name is. And yeah, that's about it for Up Horizon. And with that, I have come to the end of this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope to see all of you in the next video or stream. Bye, come, say bye. I love it, terrifying. <laughs>